Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today we're talking glyphs. Let's go! To start working on the talent, we'll want to rebirth into the glyphrite talent and talk to Ira in Dunbarton. We'll need to snag Patterns of Power 1 that she sells for 10k gold. Reading this book will unlock all 5 skills for the talent. I won't be going over how to rank these skills here as there is plenty of info on that available on the wiki pages. Instead, we'll talk about the use of each skill and what glyphs are and how they are used. Stationary crafting is the skill we use to make all of our materials. The primary items we'll need to use the skill are Vital Feathers, sold in general shops for 1k gold each, Mana, Gold, and Sunlight Herbs, and finally lots and lots of leather of any kind. For collecting the herbs, I highly suggest using the skill Phantasmal Sight first. When a gold light appears over the herb plot, it guarantees a number of huge lucky gathers, up to 3 times per plot per light at level 10. Vital feathers, mana herbs, and gold herbs are used to craft magic quill pens. Leather is used to make soft parchment, and soft parchment, mana herbs, and sunlight herbs are used to make magic parchment. Using magic parchment and the magic quill pens together with the next skill are what we will be using as primary resource to create glyphs. We can also use paints to create custom dye colors. Paints are created using the handicraft skill, using any type of fish, bottled water, and an herb of the appropriate color. Some additional colors can be created using the paint mixing kettle in a homestead. You can find one in Zenoa's homestead if you don't already have one of your own. The skill we will use the magic parchment and magic quill pens with is glyph design. Here we create a design of our choosing using either preset tools or a combination of symbols, shapes, lines, and effects. The higher the rank of the skill, the more of these symbols you can use. This is a design that will appear under your feet when you use this glyph later on. When we finish using glyph design, it will give us a glyph imprint. Glyph imprints have six different grades, one through five stars, and a rank above normal five stars is five golden stars. The quality of the imprint is based on the rank of the skill and your intelligence stat. After we have the imprint we want to use, we can use the skill glyph formulation. This is where we take the imprint and make a glyph from it. The number of glyphs we can formulate from the imprint are listed on the imprint itself. When this number reaches zero, the imprint becomes unusable. There is currently no use for imprints with zero uses left. It's safe to throw these away. The glyphs we obtain will be a random level with an effect for a random skill. The level range of the glyph can be determined by the imprint used. A 1 star imprint can make glyphs between levels 1 and 3, a 5 star imprint can make glyphs between levels 6 and 9, and a golden 5 star imprint can make glyphs between levels 7 and 10. The level 10 glyphs are very useful, but not in very high demand as almost anyone can make them if they have the right imprint. There are two types of glyphs we can obtain, self target and ground target. The most important glyphs we can look out for are HP, MP, Wound, and Stamina Restoration glyphs, which are ground target type glyphs, as well as damage glyphs for things like Hailstorm, Magnum Shot, Water Cannon, Flash Launcher, Smash, Shuriken Charge, Drop Kick, etc, etc, which are all self-target type glyphs. Alright, we have our glyphs. Now how do we use them? The next skill we're going to check out is the Glyph Evocation skill. Glyph Evocation is how we use our new glyphs. In the skill window, you will see a manage button next to this skill. As we pull open the UI for evocation, we see slots where we can place glyphs. There are four sets of three. This becomes much easier to understand when we use the skill. As we have put glyphs into our evocation skill, we can use it. A few icons appear in the center of our screen, asking us which set of glyphs we would like to evoke. We can select the set we want by pressing F1, F2, F3, or F4. Depending on the type of glyph, it will either self-cast immediately, or let us select a location we would like to center the ground target glyphs on. Even at rank 1 there is some delay between the time the glyph evocation expires and when this skill comes off cooldown, so there is a short amount of downtime. Other than that, another limitation on glyph usage is durability. Every time you evoke glyph, it will use a small amount of durability on the glyph. At 0% durability, the glyphs become unusable until they are repaired or replaced. To repair a glyph, you will either need a Glyph Recovery Scroll 10 or Glyph Recovery Scroll 100. Both of these items are obtained by fragmenting unwanted glyphs. Remember how you get random effects and levels on each glyph? It's not such a bad thing, as all those unwanted effects or useless glyphs can be used to keep your current glyphs going for longer. Even low level imprints or glyphs can be used for this. Now that we understand all of this, it's time to talk about the final skill on the list, Glyph Lore. 
Glyphlor is definitely the most annoying of all these skills to rank, as it requires some expert winemaking to get from rank 3 to rank 1. Higher ranks of Glyphlor give us more uses for each imprint, longer evocation, and bonus quality to imprint. This further decreases the downtime and increases our production rate of glyphs significantly. While we're on the topic, Glyphrite Grandmaster also has some very useful effects, similar to Glyphlore. It gives 10 more uses for imprints, 20 total, and increases the limit of objects you can use during glyph design from 50 to 60. That's it for this video, and I hope I was able to give you a better understanding of the Glyphrite talent. Be sure to leave a comment if you have a question, like the video if it helps you, and subscribe to see more content like this in the future. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.